So I'm Nick Parkinson. I own uh, Four Pounders, which is a five-star rated daycare centre within the Sutton Coalfield area. That's the license is through DEFRA and the local council. We've been established 14 years now, and we're based on this 20-acre site. Uh, we offer daycare, training, grooming, dog walking, puppy socialisation, and I've got two off-lead secure parks with five fields amongst them. So over the last few, of few months, we've been chatting with a lot of the staff because we've seen quite a lot of problems arising from the, the recent lockdowns that we've all gone through over the last 18 months and feel that we need to try and pass on some of the knowledge we've got to help people who have got dogs. I mean, there is something like 3 million dogs now have been um, given out to clients or sold to clients for the period of about 20 months or so, I think it is now. So that's a 30% increase in the number of dogs in the UK in an 18 to 20 month period, which is a phenomenal amount. So therefore, you've got a lot more dog owners that have not had, uh, are not new owners of dogs now who have not ever owned a dog before. So they need some help. We thought we'd have a little go at trying to give some sort of advice on the different sections within the dog industry, um, which will hopefully help people and that then helps the dog. Um, we don't want to see dogs rehomed. So um, hopefully over the coming weeks where we show these uh, videos, you'll become established members of our uh, crowd and, and subscribe along to the channel itself. We would hope to like to go live each week, twice a top week. One with an update on certain part of the industry and then another a, a breakdown of the different breeds there are out there now because a lot of new breeds coming into the country and just how easy they are or how hard they are to fit in with your family life. Because um, it seems to be that there isn't that much advice on all the different breeds. And we've got 90 breeds visiting us now on a on a month-to-month on -month basis, 90 breeds come in with an average of 50, 55 dogs a day. So... Um, that's a lot of dogs we've been looking after for that period. Now, it would be good if we could sort of explain to dog owners that you need to know a lot more about the whole dog industry because then you will pick the part that appeals to you, be it compet competition, be it showing, be it just general good manners with a dog. Uh, you want to train it up to compete at some of the different sort of uh, competitions and find a couple of people I've known for a few years now compete at uh, country level and they'll be coming on the channel and, and expressing some of their views on on how you get into these sports and how you do well at them. Um, one represents Britain and the other one's Great Britain team so very very experienced and um, very fascinating to listen to what they say. Now the people are returning to work we've seen these problems which has come about from the fact that during the lockdown periods we've obviously been at home didn't need to leave or we weren't allowed to leave and therefore the dog has been with people all this period now those have started escalating now into anxiety problems so not being with the owner is creating a problem and of course we're all going back to work now um, maybe not on a five day a week basis like we were before going to the office but we're certainly going back two days a week into the office now as we're finding with our customers so that means the dog's being left now I'm not saying that you have to use daycare but you've got to get your dog used to not being with you and being comfortable mixing in other elements of life dogs were very sociable they used to hang around in packs and now being locked up at home isn't doing them any good. If they've got any anxiety or issues, then your sofa will be chopped up and eaten. And um, the skirting boards, the door handles, will all start taking a bit of a, a bashing. Now, you don't want that to happen, not only because of the value of it having to replace things, but the dog is stressed. And if the dog is stressed, it's not enjoying itself. This is why it's so important to actually socialise your dog, be it through puppy socialisation classes or through daycare. Trying to take your dog for a walk in the park nowadays has become harder because you can't let your dog off the lead. That means it's then, unfortunately, not really doing what it wants to do and it feels a bit trapped. And the biggest issue we get now within the training of dogs is my dog is getting aggressive on a lead. Now that comes from a couple of background situations, but the main part of it is that it's just not being told that that's not acceptable. 
but we all love dogs we don't want to be nasty to dogs so it's hard to actually portray that to them um now daycare walking puppy socialization all helps it's very rare you can go for a walk with your friends in the park all of you together who own dogs and even if you know somebody and you bump into them you generally only speak for two minutes maybe so your dogs have a little chat little bark run around together and then you go on your way again so it's quite anti-social in some ways owning a dog and it's certainly much harder than people think it is to socialize them daycare is about the only place that you will properly socialize your dog as you can imagine that uh, with 90 breeds and 50 a day in there's a huge combination of dogs meeting there and our biggest compliment is my dog no longer finds it an issue meeting other dogs in the park that's good because of the dogs obviously in a better state of mind it's also good from your point of view because it's not embarrassing you don't have to run after the dog and get stressed about the situation which we didn't buy dogs to get stressed over so over the coming weeks we've got planned is everything from buying a dog the cost of keeping a dog the different services within the industry the different competitions within the industry and anything relating to the behavior of dogs will be covered over the coming months it may not be myself talking, it'll probably be we once a week and it'll be one of the competitors that I know or one of the other staff members. And um, hopefully we can pick you up as a subscriber and then inform you with as much information as we probably can do. Um, I'm going to give you a couple of examples now of some of the things we might be able to help you with. The postman comes to your door. The postman fiddles with the letterbox. The dog thinks it's dodgy. Barks and the postman goes. So barking is inherently encouraged by us when really it's the opposite of what's happening the postman hasn't come to rob you the postman's come to deliver a letterbox but trying to explain that to a dog is absolutely impossible and it encourages bad behavior because the dog is thinking it's obviously managed to get you to go away or get the postman to go away separation is a massive problem now that we're seeing over and over again now you don't want your dog to follow you around the house because that's the first part of it going wrong now we think it's quite cool and when it's a puppy you want it with you all the time fussing it and you can't help but love puppies it's impossible not to and therefore you're making the problem worse um your dog then is not sleeping as much as it needs to it feels it's guarding you protecting you and it's working in its opinion so therefore it's getting tired and we all know without enough sleep you get irritated ratty and make bad decisions it's not human it's not invented anything a dog yet i have got no idea whatsoever what it has if it has and it doesn't recognize itself in a mirror which is a very bad sign really but um and you would think i'd just check it like that but no they don't and it's a surprise to them each time they see themselves in the mirror so there's lots of different things there that you would sort of put in a classification of, of it's not that way of life that they're well they're not leading the same way as we are they don't think the same way as we are we have a brilliant bond with them because we've worked with them and they've had them as pets for a long period of time and i think some of that is is actually in the breeding of it now and they are already halfway through to the knowledge of understanding how they live with us which when you think about it eight to twelve weeks is the average now when a dog is leaving its parents and coming to a living out obviously a household like we've got or yourselves now that's quite bad really when you think about it imagine if it was us in the role of going to move out of your house when your parents had only you know you'd only been with your parents two or three months it's quite insane really and with that in mind they can't speak english they have no discussion and yet they do an amazingly good job of bonding with us and really you have to say that it's an incredible relationship between dogs and humans and um and that's been probably the building blocks for many a person who, who owns a dog once you've owned a dog once uh you can't help but say it's the best friend you've ever had now to have a quick uh, scan of what else we're going to be putting on here yeah training now it won't be me showing you the videos on training it'll be one of the staff who works for me tom who's got an incredible uh knowledge of why dogs do things and it's very important that you learn why dogs do things because it's not necessarily the same way of thought as we would have and we always assume everybody thinks the same way as us which is quite often an, an error and you judge people for the wrong reasons in that way and we obviously think dogs are as intelligent as us and talk to them in that manner now if you look at the way 
when a dog's off a lead, for example, it's running around, you, you don't think it's paying much attention. It's paying a lot more attention to you than you think it is. But it can see far better than you. Its, it's view is wider. It's uh, keeping an eye on us and it's listening out for our tones of voice and what reactions or body movements we're making. So if you're relaxed and you're just wandering around, the dog's not going to be stressed. It'll keep an eye on you and it'll have its distance it's working at. Then it gets a distraction. It sees another dog. If it's not socialised, off it goes. And you're shouting at it. Well, you're not gonna, it's not going to listen to you then. Very similarly to if you've ever competed, you never hear the crowd. You're too tunnel vision on what you're trying to do. And the dog is a very similar situation to that. So you've got to try and start your boundaries early on of assessing where the dog is comfortable being with you. And when then it starts becoming into that part of, well, I don't want him going any further. It's a gun dog training background that will actually show you how to eliminate the problem of dogs not coming back. It's very simple. It's a two step process and Tom no doubt will show you very, very well and um, explain a few more of the little tricks and traits that we've learned over the last few years on why dogs do certain things. Now, we there is a big problem as well that's been brewing now for several years, which comes from the food within the dog industry. Now, there are three different types of food, which we'll explain in more detail later on. There is the raw food diet, there is a mixer diet, and there is a complete diet. Now, many years ago, when I was 30, and sim similar, similar to yourselves out there, you'll probably remember there were only a few manufacturers of dog food. In actual fact, there were only four, I think. So they were comfortably making a lot of money because that was only split. The whole dog industry was split between four different manufacturers of food. I think it was 350 odd at least at the moment. So you can see that even though the sales of dogs have gone up, that amount of money has been split into very small segments across the market. So, of course, they weren't making the sales targets and um, they realised by increasing the protein within the food content, it makes your dog more hyperactive, it makes you run around more, therefore it needs to eat more, and therefore you buy more dog food. An example of how that plays out is, I had a, a gentleman join me who had done 22 years with the police, with the dog side of uh, the police, in, the police uh, federation, and had now left, bought himself two dogs which he'd got through Eastern Block contacts in the police where all the good sort of working dogs come from, Dobermans, who, which were monstrous in size. They're in IPA, they're in the World Championships and the IPA Championship uh, cha competitions each year. So he's at a very, very, very high level. It's probably the hardest of all the disciplines and requires intelligence and a lot of fitness. They're on a protein level of 15. He won't enter the competition if it went to 17. I know another person not far from here, who will be on here as well, who's started as a hobby doing gun dogs. He's now in the British team. And he will say exactly the same. He feeds his dog 15% protein. And if it goes two or three higher than it, the dog won't concentrate. There's no point in entering the competition. Now, we don't need to be quite as over the top as that because we're not actually at that level of competition. But when you think the average domestic food given to dogs is 25%, most of them are over 30, to be honest, your dog is then on double what a dog in the Olympics would be on. So you can see why dogs don't run out of energy. You can see why they don't concentrate. And most of the problems within the dog industry are related to the food, or it certainly plays a big part of it. Because if you were drinking, a let's say, a, a well-known sports drink, all week, you would be running around chatting to everybody, telling you how brilliant everything was, and this person, that person, I'll go and do this, I'll go and do that. Not even noticing that you probably irritated everybody in the process. And that's exactly the same thing as what a high protein diet does with dogs. Carbohydrates to us is protein to a dog. So the fact it's a trendy word or isn't like cholesterol makes it twice as hard to try and put this over to people because you love your dog, you think you'd better give it a good diet. High protein sounds very good. If it was high cholesterol, you'd be looking into it more and more. So have a look at the food you're getting. It doesn't matter which brand that you're buying. You need, as an average guide, a dog over a year should be on a percentage of 20% uh, overall 
protein content in the food. So that's in the whole bag, 20% of it would be protein. That's a rough guide to where your dog should be. Now, every manufacturer has been made to put this figure on the side of their packet because it's becoming apparent that they're obviously misleading us all. And that's what's causing a lot of problems, which then leads to dogs being rehomed because people can't control the dog, doesn't listen to them, won't be obedient. When really all it's our fault because we've been giving it the wrong food. That will be that will be talked about in much more detail, but um, that gives you an idea of some of the things that we've um, learned. Um, now, right, well, hopefully that's given you an insight to some of the knowledge that we've picked up over the years within our industry. And um, over the coming weeks and hopefully months, then obviously we're going to be showing different videos on different parts of the dog industry. And there's going to be quite a few people joining us and, and passing on their experience as well. So press the like button, don't smash it because you'll break your computer and subscribe. Subscribing does not mean that you're paying any money. It just means that you'll be notified that they, we've been in another video. So it would just come up on your YouTube channel when you logged on and you could click on it if you wanted to read it. If it wasn't relevant, you don't need to. So subscribing is not a financial commitment by any means whatsoever. Um, and hopefully that will give you good insight to how to get on in the dog world. Thanks for your time.